Okay, so levers are basically the foundation of biomechanics and the best way to learn about levers is to actually see it in action or to do it yourself. So right here I have a lever. There's three classes, a first, second, and third class lever. This is the first class lever. I have a plank sitting on top of a fulcrum right here so that, as you can see, it rotates. Right now I have it balanced. This thing is about 43 inches, so the fulcrum is sitting at about 21 and a half inches. So there's three things that you want to keep in mind when it comes to levers and mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage is equal to the effort arm over the resistance arm. So this is a ratio. You have a mechanical advantage when that ratio is greater than one. If it's less than one, you have a mechanical disadvantage. Another thing you want to keep in mind, as mechanical advantage goes up, range of motion goes down. Uh, as range of motion goes up, mechanical advantage goes down. This is our lever, and it's, since it's perfectly balanced, mechanical advantage is at one because our this side is going to be our effort arm. This side is equal in length to that side. So right here I have a 13 pound kettlebell. Put it on this side. So right now that is exerting 13 pounds of force. So I'm going to just apply 13 pounds of force on this side to neutralize this lever. Since the mechanical advantage is one, I only have to apply the equal amount of force on the effort arm as the resistance arm. Okay, so now, as you can see, I've moved the fulcrum this way, so I shortened our effort arm and lengthened the resistance arm. Right now, this is at about a third of the way down, so it's at about... 14.3 inches and this side should be exactly twice that. So that means our mechanical advantage is exactly half because the effort arm is uh, half the length of our resistance arm. Which means now, this 13 pound kettlebell, I'm going to need at least 26 pounds of force on this side to be able to lift that thing up. So let's just look at that exactly measured. Here's a 10 pound plate, right? Right about there. The placement is kind of weird because the kettlebell has a very, very small surface area on its bottom. The plates have big surface area and I'm not really accounting for that so I have to fidget with it a little bit. So now I could, I'm going to point out one of the concepts that I introduced earlier is that when mechanical advantage goes down, range of motion usually goes up. This means that when I'm at a mechanical disadvantage, I am moving the resistance arm at a much greater magnitude than when I have uh, a mechanical di advantage. The distance that the effort arm is going to move is going to be substantially less than what the resistance arm is going to move. So, um, best to at about five and a quarter inches. So, mechanical advantage is two, so it should be somewhere around 10 inches that this moves. So five and a quarter on that side, 10 and a half on this side. So, since mechanical advantage is half on, thi on this lever system when this is the resistance arm, the range of motion is going to double. So now what I've done here is lengthen the effort arm and shorten the resistance arm. So what that's going to do is it's going to give me a mechanical advantage. I place this at about a third of the way down the plank. So that makes the resistance arm exactly about half of the effort arm. So that's 13 pounds. I should only have to apply about six and a half pounds. Now I'm not accounting for the actual weight of the plank. So, give or take. So, here's seven and a half total pounds. There's the first five. Here's two and a half. There you go. Now, like 
I said earlier, as your mechanical advantage goes up, your range of motion goes down. So, what do we mean by that? <laughs> 10 and 3 quarters inches from the table. This side should be all about half. About five and a half. So let's take this concept of mechanical advantage a little bit farther just to see how effectively it works. So that's a 26 pound kettlebell. I move the fulcrum as far as I can so that it doesn't roll off. And now I have this very long effort arm. So now, let's see how much force it takes to move that thing. 